Say it. Holy. holy. Come on, Riverside, put your hands on it. Say holy. Holy. Yeah, that's what we call Jesus. He's the Lord God. Lord God. Yeah. He's almighty. Almighty. I love it. Let's sing it again, everybody. Holy. Holy. Yeah, I love it. Come on. Somebody say holy. Holy. Yes, he is. He's the Lord God. Lord God. Yeah, come on. He's almighty. Almighty. This is what we say. Come on. Say heaven. Yeah, and earth on. He's full of thy glory. Oh, heaven. Yeah, and earth on. Full of yeah, thy glory. Oh, holy. Yeah, and righteous is your name. He's omnipotent. He's glorious. Yes, he is. Say holy. Come on, up aside. That's the whole song. Let's do it again from the top. Holy. I did it. Stand on your feet and do it with us. Come on. Somebody say, Holy. Hallelujah. He's the Lord God. Hallelujah. He's the Almighty God. He's the mighty one, the mighty Savior. One more time. Say, Holy. I like it, I like it. Come on, say holy. Holy. Yeah, he's a wonderful God. He's the Lord God. Yeah. He's almighty. Almighty. Let's do that other part again. We can heaven. We join with the heaven and earth. Full of thy glory. Oh heaven. And turn on full of thy glory. Oh, holy. Yeah, he's righteous. He's your name. Yeah, omnipotent. He's glorious. Holy, holy, holy. Let's do that part. We declare that he's worth. Out of the glory, yeah, and honor, and power, to up, yeah, of glory, yeah, and honor, and power. I feel an inversion. No, we praise you. Yeah, we praise you. We come to give a praise today. We praise you, Jesus. We magnify you. Yeah. Yeah, we praise you. We give you all the praise. Yes, we do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and turn it off. Full of thy glory. Oh, and his righteousness is coming. From the potato. Hey, he's glorious God. Yes, Jesus. We praise you. Yes, Jesus. Yes, in your Lord, we. Lord, we praise you. Now, somebody give them praise in the building. I said, somebody give them praise in the building. For the Savior of the whole wide world. This one of the scripts. For the Savior of the whole wide world is about to be born. So your neighbor, he could have died unless he had been born first. Somebody clap your hands right here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christmas, Christmas. Oh, 
one of my favorite times of the year. I mean, we get to gather together and eat, see our family and eat. Oh, man, we, we, we get to laugh and eat and exchange gifts. And girl, there's some good food. Oh, my goodness, and eat. Oh, my goodness. I remember when I was young, my mother used to sit me down, and she thought it was her God-given need to instill in us the real Christmas story. And I'm not talking about Ralphie shooting his eye out, okay? <laughs> the real Christmas story, and that's the story of Jesus. And she did, and if I remember correctly, I wanna say that was in Luke chapter two, Luke chapter two, right here around verse 13. And she would read this to us year after year. And suddenly there was an angel there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward man. So it was when the angels had gone from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And now when they had seen them, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. Riverside, clap your hands for Kelly Halfer. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to say. for Professor Patrick Bailey.
Hallelujah, God.
favorite Christmas songs. It starts off, in my mind. Oh, you know, it's the temptations. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and I mean, it's not really Christmas until you hear that song. My mama used to tell me I hung around Uncle Junior too much because that was his favorite Christmas song. But you know, Unc, he used to give the best Christmas gifts, so I was all up in his face, okay? You know. <laughs> so, oddly enough, that's what God did, that did for us. You can't talk about Christmas without thinking about gifts. And they go hand in hand. And the Bible tells us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave. Yeah. He gave. He's not just the provider, but he's the God that gives. And let me tell you, God don't shop at Dollar Tree, okay? He's not giving, he's not giving cheap gifts, okay? Instead, God gave us the greatest gift anybody could ever give. He gave us the precious lamb. He gave us the child that was wonderful. He gave us this special gift, Jesus. Let's be one big choir. a bit younger, my mother and them used to sing it just a little different. Can we just say, go tell it on the mountain? Let's do it together, everybody in the room. You ready? Let's go. Go. Tell. Tell it on the mountain. Over the hill. And yeah. There you go. That Jesus. One more time. You got it now. Go. Hey. Over the hills, Over the hills and, and everywhere, everywhere. Oh, tell it on the mountain, oh, tell it on the mountain. That, Jesus. that Jesus Christ is We got another one for you, Jesus. 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 Oh, what a wonderful child. Oh, what a wonderful child. I hear you, Riverside. Jesus. Jesus. 
call his name. He's so lonely. So lonely. New life. Yeah. Come on. Just listen to the angels sing. We say glory, glory, glory. Say Jesus. Come on, it's in the house now. Oh, what a wonderful. We call this name. Say Jesus. So lonely. Yeah. He brought us new life. Yeah. Come on. Just listen to the angels sing. Glory. Let's go old school. Go tell it. Come on, let's start clapping your hands. Go tell it. Go tell it all the time. Go tell it. Go tell it. Go tell it. Go tell it. I feel an embrace in trouble. Go tell it. That Jesus Christ is born. Because he lives again. I got to go tell it. Say y'all say glory, 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 yep. glory to the Now somebody clap their hands and people go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Now look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, come on, don't fool me. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Jesus, Jesus. is a special gift. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Heaven sent me. Real big, everybody. Say heaven. Heaven sent me. Pastor said Franklin. Ah! 
sadness. Now, honey, you get a little Jesus, honey, he'll make it better, okay? <laughs> oh, my goodness, Jesus begin to work some things out in your life. And as we journey through this life, we deal with all kind of things. We, we, we remember some of our loved ones that we have lost along the way. And, and I know that it hurts. Seasonal depression, it is real. And look, but I want you to know, even when some of us are not experiencing the joy that everybody's talking about, I want you to know the beautiful thing about God is that God knows your end from your beginning. He is walking with you every path that you are taking. The word already tells us, count it all joy. When you face diverse temptations, knowing the trying of your faith, it's going to perfect some things in you. I want you to know that even when it's hard, even when it's difficult, God got you. God got you in the midst of it. And Jesus, he came not just to, to birth. It's not just about the birth of Jesus, but it's about the fact that God came to give you joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. He came to give you love, love everlasting. And so I want you to be encouraged today. I want you to get some Jesus on the inside of you. I, I need you to get all this all up in your spirit today. And when you get that thing in your spirit, you will have something to shout about. You'll have something to be grateful about because you know that God gives us love and it is a gift that keeps on giving. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus went to the cross and he went to the cross because of his love. So as you are in the hustle and the bustle of this season, go ahead and remember the best gift of all. And it is God's love for you. Riverside, clap your hands for LaShonda Evans. Come on. Joy to the world. People, joy. Joy to the world. 
Somebody clap for joy. Joy, unspeakable joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My, my, my. My, 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 my. Joy to the world. What a joy it is, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that we can come this pre Christmas morning to celebrate one of the greatest gifts this world has ever seen, received. I don't know about you, but if you think about it, there are some gifts that you will receive on tomorrow that they're just for that time, for that moment. Uh, next year, this time, those gifts would have either expired or be used up. Do I have a witness? There's some gifts that you have, they're definitely not timeless. They might be expensive, but they're not priceless. But the gift that we celebrate this morning is a t priceless gift and a timeless gift. What a joy that is that we can receive that gift this morning. For the few moments we'll talk together this morning, I want us to look a little bit on continuing our theme from last week on fear not, fear not. We want to talk a little bit about this gift that I believe that God has given to us that can eternally impact our lives. The gift of God through Jesus Christ our Lord not only gives us a brand new hope for a future, but gives us the hope of eternal life. Can we talk about that a few minutes and then I get you up out of here? I know some of you are thinking about um, the game today, but I'm going to, we need a win. We definitely need a win. But I don't want you to jinx the game now. Don't jinx the game. Don't look at the score. It's going to be the same. Don't, don't, don't look at, just, just ignore it for a moment. Because uh, I believe if you look at it, you're going to jinx it. So don't do that. Amen. Just, just, just let it wait until the end of the sunset and then we, 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 we can look at it. Uh, let me ask you if you will. Would you mind standing with me this morning? Let's read the word of God and then we... I want to bring to you this morning a very familiar passage. It comes to us from Matthew chapter 1. In my Bible it says this is the story of Jesus. I want to read to you verses 18 through 25. Let's read those together first. Starting at verse 18, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Maybe on the screen it would be King James. And in your own Bibles, just follow along with me. This is how it reads in my Bible. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When Mary, his mother, had been engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child, child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, be not afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And you shall, she shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place to fulfill what was spoken of by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. This is it. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel the Lord commanded him, took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son and called his name Jesus. Can I drop this in your spirit again? This is it. I want to zero in on this verse. And Joseph woke up from his sleep, did as the angel commanded, took Mary as his wife. You may be seated in God's presence. My father, how can humans 
we tell the story of heaven becoming a part, a part of earth, God becoming man. It's impossible. And this morning, Father, as we revisit that narrative, may the power of the Holy Spirit make this a fresh word in our hearts. Fresh inspiration, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I know Kristen, Dr. Woods, we have heard this story every year. The truth is, I could throw a rock in the audience and say, hey, why don't you come forward and tell the story? And you could tell the story. Why? Some of you have been telling it since your children. You have participated in the annual church Christmas play, cantatas. You know how to tell the story. But yet every year we hear the story, it sounds fresh. Every year we hear the songs. They have this power to pull us in. Indeed, the story of Jesus is a timeless story. There's something about the story that brings us hope. And the passage that we're looking at this morning, Matthew chapter 1, 18 through 25, gives us an honest portrait of what it means as a child of God to live in the tension between this theological gap that is called the interregnum. My wife said I should use that word. She likes it. It means the, this gap between the kingdom of God inaugurated and the kingdom of God realized. The, the gap between the already and the not yet. The gap between the first coming of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus. We live in that tension. And the reality is, if you're honest with yourself, Leah, in those moments, in those tension, we find it most difficult when we experience interruptions. When the thought and the plan you had for your life is interrupted, it creates a conflict, a tension, not only in your mind, but sometimes in your world. This tension sometimes comes out of nowhere. An unexpected news, an interruption, an unanticipated in event, an interruption. These interruptions, looking through the eyes of flesh, can seem like disturbance. They've come to disrupt our lives, to, to mess up our plans. But, 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 but if I might just interject this morning and submit to you, put this in your spirit for consideration, that sometimes God's best plans for your life and my life come through the form of divine interruptions. Sometimes these plans that God gives, these, these interruptions... If we would only pause to consider these divine interruptions, we would discover that when God has a plan, a purpose for your life, sometimes they come through interruptions. What would life be, ladies and gentlemen, if all God's plans and path for your life would be just a smooth path that you know exactly what the end would be? friend of mine, he always said, I love it being a Christian because I can see up the corner, but I can't see around the corner. And around the corner gives me anticipation. And these divine interruptions that come in your life and my life would remind us that sometimes God gives us calling a petition. It's like a petition, an invitation that God gives us to align our plans with his plans. And I've discovered, ladies and gentlemen, 
that you cannot align your plan with God's plan until you're willing to step away from your plan. There is no stepping into God's plan with first stepping away from your plan. This is the discipline that we discover in this discourse this morning. The Bible tells us that Joseph, do you mind me calling him Joe? That Joe had a plan for his life. He had waited for years because in that tradition, as I shared with you last week, sometimes um, engagements, sometimes marriages are arranged before birth. I don't know when Joseph's father, Jacob, decided to arrange the marriage with Mary's parents, but I could imagine Joseph is waiting for a long time to finally consummate his marriage. He looks forward to moving Mary into his crib and enjoying life together. And everything seems to be working well. The plans are coming afoot. He's looking forward to the day to have his entourage, his, his his, his bridal party walked down the streets of Nazareth, stopping at Mary's house and see the beautiful Mary stepping out and engage her as his wife. Mary decided that somehow she wants to take a break, a vacation. She's going over to her cousin. And she goes over to her cousin. And three months later, Joseph hears she's coming back. Can you imagine the excitement in his heart? Mary's coming back and the wedding is a few days from now. But when she comes back, she gives him this unexpected news, this interruption. I'm pregnant. You're gone for three months and you return with the news you're pregnant. How do you handle interruptions? How do you deal with intrusions? She comes back and she tells him, She's pregnant. And Joseph, the Bible says, Leah, he is a righteous man. And because he's a good brother, he's caught between the law and love. The law says legally he has the right to condemn Mary, to have her stoned. But love says I can't. He's caught between law and love. The Bible says he has this tension, this conflict. <laughs> Some of you sitting here this morning, you agree with me. You have experienced that. Caught in the middle of a divine interruption. He's caught in it. How do I be good but yet still love? Isn't that what the Christmas story is all about? God still being good, still being righteous, and still love you. Deciding, caught between the law and love, deciding to send his self to a hill called Calvary. Caught between love and law. The Bible said Joseph is a good dude. Jo Joe is a good brother. Joe is a good brother. The Bible says he's, he, he, he comes up with this plan. How do I protect Mary and still protect myself? How I hold my emotions in check? Can I drop this in your spirit, Christian? Are you mature enough spiritually? Not to hurt while you're hurting. Are you mature enough that your pain don't become punitive? Are you mature enough, child of God, that you can be in pain but protect while you're vulnerable? He can do it. Disgrace her. How dare you come back after three months with a story about a Holy Ghost? Remember, there's no internet. No Facebook. No TikTok. No posting. I don't know where you've been, what you have done. But you come back with this Story. I 
can hurt you, but I love you. So Joseph, he's thinking about this. How do I find two people that can support me, protecting Mary, even though I'm tore up from the floor? And it's in this conflict. Sister Pelot is in this tension that we find Job. The Bible says he's planning how, how caught between law and love. What do I do? Hmm. The Bible says while he's caught in this tension, God interrupts his plan by sending an angel in a dream. I, I, I woke my wife up this morning. I told you my wife, here, my, here's my sermons before you do. So she got to listen to them twice. I woke up this morning and said, have you ever thought about the similarities with Joseph of the Old Testament and Joseph of the New Testament? And she said, wow, that's amazing. You need to tell them that. I didn't, ha- didn't want to tell you this, but blame it on Wendy. Have you ever thought about both of them dads are Jacob? They both go into Egypt to protect their family. They're both called called in a sexual scandal. They both can hurt, but they protect. When you get home, read some more about Joe's. Something about Joseph. It, It seems that Joseph's are dreamers. Because the Bible says he gets a dream and in his dream is an angel. And the angel says to Joe, don't you worry. I got this and I got you. And that's the word on the street this morning. When you're caught between the tension, living in this gap, don't worry. I got this and I got you. And the Bible says the angel had to assure Joseph. Why? Because if Joseph protects Mary, he loses his reputation. He now takes on Mary's stigma. Because you know if you grew up in the old church that I grew up in, people begin to count the day from your marriage to when you give birth. Some of you have had church hurt because people have counted the day you got married and the day you gave birth. It's not anything new. Joseph had to deal with that stigma. His reputation is at stake. Can can I drop this? Can I drop another thing in your spirit real quickly? If you are obsessed with what people think about you, it's a guarantee you'll forget what God thinks about you. And you are not, you are not ready to be used by God if you are more concerned by the the criticism you will experience for being obedient. Can I say that again? If you are more concerned about what people think and rather than about what God thinks, you're not ready for God to use you. And that's why God said to the angel, Joe, you can't be afraid. If you take Mary, they're going to talk about you. If you dare take Mary, she's going to have an early baby. And somebody in the church is going to say, I know he wasn't all that good. He round here fronting. He ain't all that righteous. As a matter of fact, that's why Mary had to go away. He knocked her up. Joe, if you dare be obedient, 
You have to always realize that obedience comes with sacrifice. And the biggest sacrifice sometimes might be you. Mm. But, but this is it. I'm done. I'm done. It's Christmas Sabbath. I know you got to go home. I got to get home too. My daughter just came in this morning. This is it. I'll get out of your way, Dr. Woods. Every person who God used in the Bible at great levels have said these words. If you go back to Genesis 6, you'll see it and follow all the way. These words are famous when God's going to use you. Do you ready for, are you ready for it? And Joseph got up and did all that the angel commanded. I wish I dropped the mic. Yeah. Joseph got up and did all the angels commanded. I got to say it again. Joseph got up in the tension. He gets up and said, I'm willing and ready to face my tomorrow based on what God said. And I did challenge somebody this morning that if you want to see God work it out for you, just decide I'm going to stand on the word of God. <laughs> Go back and read the story for yourself. Joseph has over 300 prophecies that he has to fulfill. And in his human power, impossible. He's in Nazareth. Jesus must be born in Bethlehem. He's in Nazareth. Jesus must come out of Egypt. He's in Nazareth. Jesus must be called a Nazarite. Yet God said, if you trust me and not be afraid, I got your future in my hand. And what I prophesy over your life, I can fulfill it. You don't have to worry about it. Touch your neighbor and say, he got you. And he's got this. I like how Luke, Christian, This blows my mind, Lynn. This blows my mind, right? I'm reading this narrative. And I drop into Luke chapter 2. And Dr. Luke, he says, And Joseph journeys, verse 5, journeys down to Bethlehem. And he took Mary. But he doesn't say his wife. He says he took Mary, whom he's engaged to. He, he took Mary. I said, see, I'm looking it up because you never saw this before. I read the Bible a hundred times. I didn't see this. I thought Dr. Luke said, Joseph took Mary, his wife. Pastor Humphrey, that's what I thought. But that's not what J J Dr. Luke says. When you get home, look at the Greek words if you think I'm messing this thing up. He takes Mary, Nicole, who he's engaged to, down to Bethlehem with him. Now in my sanctified imagination, why is a brother taking Mary to Bethlehem when he's the one to pay taxes? But if you are obedient... Sometimes you have to step out and do some crazy things to protect that which you are committed to. I, I believe if, if, if he had left Mary home, maybe somebody would get in her head. Her, I don't know what would happen. But the Bible says he takes Mary, whom he is engaged to. Because Dr. Luke wants you to know that even though he stepped in by faith, Kay, and moved in with Mary, he still protected her until Jesus was born. And 
watch this child of God as I get out of your way this morning. Eddie, watch this. He surrenders his future to the command of God. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Because God has asked you to do something. And somehow you are afraid. And the word this morning is, can you do all that I've commanded? Because that's what the Christmas story is all about. That Jesus Christ did all that God commanded. The Christmas story doesn't end in the manger. It ends on a hill called Calvary. Look how he works it out. Once Joseph surrenders Zain, he surrenders to the command. The Bible says God works it out. That Job takes Mary with him. And when they got to Bethlehem, Mary said, Joel, I don't feel too well. Baby, we can't go back. It's a long journey home. Joel, I ain't talking about COVID or the flu. I think the baby is coming. Baby, 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 we don't have nowhere. Could it be that the reason why they did not have family to help was because of the stigma. Because Joe is from Bethlehem. If I leave here to go back to Jamaica, I must find me one person down there. Could be a fifth cousin. Because hey, all my family ain't move over here. Could it be the reason why there was no room was because nobody wanted to deal with the scandal. Because he is from Bethlehem. He is going home. But sometimes when you step out in faith to the command of God, that's some of the issues you have to deal with. That's real talk. But look how God works it out. There is a manger waiting. There is no room anywhere else. But God prepares a room for his child. And I do believe this morning there is a room prepared in somebody's heart for this child this morning. There is a room for the gift this morning. Look how God works it out. Herod is going to kill all the babies. God works it out that Job gets another dream and he moves down to Egypt. God works it out. And while he, he's in Egypt, he gets another dream to move back to Bethlehem. He's on his way to Bethlehem. He gets another dream, Dr. Brown. Don't go there. Go to Nazareth. When you surrender and align your future with God's plan, he will work it out. I know he will. Won't he do it? I know he will work it out. Child of God, Corey, you can come up. I'm out of your way this morning. Don't be afraid to surrender your plans and purpose and people to the plan and purpose of God. If you are willing to surrender your plans to God's plan, I know he will work it out. How do I know that? Because on a hill called Calvary, he worked out my salvation. When it seemed like all hope was lost, love lifted me. Something about when you surrender to love, love lifted me. Somebody want to sing with me? I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Greatly, deeply stained within. Sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard a desperate cry. 
and from the grime and the mire and the mud he lifted me. Now save am I. What did it? Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love protected me, sustained me. And Joseph's love protected Jesus until the day he was able to declare the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I don't know. Corey, I don't know if Joseph was around to see water turn into wine. I don't know if Joseph was around to see a blind man receive sight. I don't know if Joseph was around to see a lame man walk. Because the truth is Joseph never spoke. He never uttered a word in the Bible. Did you know that? He's spoken to, spoken of, spoken with. But Joseph never speaks. Joseph acts. Somebody this morning needs to act. This is the word. This is the word. And Joseph got up and did all that the angel said. Is there a word that you need to act upon this morning? Are you afraid because of the future? Don't be afraid. I got this and I got you. 